a painting to go into cinema. Uh, well, the camera's easier to uh, work. How do you mean easier? You just have to turn on the button. Isn't there a little more? The eye, the selectivity? Uh, no. Because every picture is right. <laughs> How do you decide on uh, quality for a superstar? Uh, anybody talks to run. What's your impression of uh, American youth today? The students that you run into? The Japanese people are making uh, no, well, we like it better where no, the boys and girls can uh, intermingle and change. Uh, change in what respect? Roles, clothes? Uh, yes, both. Not everyone digs underground movies, but those who do can dig them here. One of the most publicized of the underground films is Sleep by pop artist Andy Warhol. Some critics praise it because it is so basic without distraction. Six and a half hours of a man sleeping, nothing else. And a word with the artist himself, Andy Warhol. Andy, why is it you're making these films? Um, well, it's just easier to do. It's easier to do than um, Well, because you just... Uh, the camera has a motor and you just turn it on and you just walk away. And it just takes all by itself. Is there anything special you're trying to say in these films? Uh, no. Andy Warhol tries to say nothing and succeeds. Other filmmakers try to say a great deal, but some uninitiated viewers may find them confusing. Either way, it's a long way from Hollywood. Dave Dugan, CBS News, New York. If you're talking about the Silver Factory, this, this East 47th Street, um, Andy was the center. He was the, he was the force. You know, he said he was just there watching, paying the rent, you know, watching everybody else do things. That is again the opposite. He was the he was the, the suction that everybody came to. He was the light. Um, but he was in, in the opposite to me. He was very brilliant. But he knew how to do, you know just take it all. Yeah, I mean, you could almost look upon him. He was very zen. The thing that I do like that you're allowing me to do. In terms of the Silver Factory, Warhol and Associates, is to show that it didn't come from nowhere. That's the key. That Andy was really integrated into the New York culture, the the artistic avant-garde, the the uh, the traditional artists of total authenticity. He was part of that, just simply because Andy was a commercial artist previous to becoming famous doesn't mean that simultaneously with that he wasn't interacting with the New York avant-garde art culture. He was. So the focus was either Undine, Edie Sedgwick, Nico, Alan Midget, his, his superstars, because within the realm of just filming the world, it's beautiful, but it's still like a still life, a pastoral. Well, someone would come to the factory, and uh, Andy had a Bolex, which Charles Henry Ford and I helped him pick out back in June of 63, at peeled his camera. So the camera was there on the tripod, and basically, Billy would set up the lights, and uh, you know, we say have this, ask this person, a friend, or even strangers, to sit down and have his or her 
screen test done. Basically, it was just a film portrait. When you did that first screen test, um, Andy was there. Uh, yeah, there, all the way, you know, over there. I mean, what they did is they, Gerard said, you know, you do a screen test. And so Andy goes, In Andy's cinema, there were several stages. First, the, 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 the silent, the, his camera gazes, looks, and for a long time, sleep, haircut, mushroom, uh, uh, eat. Then, uh, a period where he was ex sound, he went into sound, uh, the scripts came in. Uh, and then, of course, they became more and more complex until um, uh, 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 after the Chelsea Journals, especially because some producers approached and, uh, and they thought that uh, he could maybe, maybe he's ready for something that we could play for wider audiences across the country. Andy imitated Jack Smith. Andy's way of delivery and conversation was Jack Smith's way. And Jack Smith hated him. Why do you think Andy wanted to imitate him? Because it was, it was such a perfect way. A lot of people talk like him today. Oh, well, gee. I don't know. Gosh. Oh. <laughs> Oh yeah, I remember actually we did a movie called Kiss. We had to kiss and kiss and kiss and kiss for 15 minutes. And I said to Andy, who am I supposed to kiss? I was supposed to kiss a young man that wasn't there. So Andy said, you know, anyone. I mean, there was a dog in the room, anyone. Who knows, but Andy, see his technique what, I mean, he taught me, his technique was put the camera on someone, walk away, just say, are you? And, and then they, they have no inhibitions with someone standing and right there. They just like really fight. I mean, I did one movie with Dennis Deegan um, like that. I mean, we were tearing at one another, ripping clothing, pulling necklaces. And all he said was have a fight. I, you know, exchanged telephone numbers with Andy, and one day uh, he called me and he said, uh, you know, Alan, uh, I'm here with, uh, mm, I'm here with Mary Warnoff and Ultraviolet and Ivy Nicholson and Rob LaRod and we got a limo and we're going to go stay at Henry McElhaney's house and uh, Rittenhouse Square and make a movie and I thought maybe you'd want to go. Thank you, Taylor. I want to keep that. My metaphor. Could we go back to your screen test? And Suzanne, screen test. Suzanne, screen test. How did you I did, had no idea I did a screen test with him. Uh, I guess I did a, a great many, you know, ten movies at least. But with Andy, it was also easy. It was also, you just wandered in and sat down, and, and, and it was sometimes Andy would walk away from the camera and just rip. And he did two hours of my ass. My, I have the most famous ass in the world. <laughs> dealing with this was he brought in Paul Morrissey, who was um, technically a useful man in the film business. 
and uh, was also, you know, in many ways, very talented and uh, intelligent guy with a great sense of humor and that fit very well into the factory. <laughs> How did you first become uh, affiliated with Andy? Um, after I saw Iron Man, I went up to Andy and demanded to be in the next movie.